My name is Michael Fryer. I'm the Outreach Officer for the Northern Ireland War Memorial here in the Cathedral Quarter in Belfast. We're a museum that tells the story of the home front in Northern Ireland during the Second World War. And for European Heritage Open Days 2020, we are delighted to welcome you on this virtual tour of the museum. This sculpture is by John Sherlock and it's called Blitz Survivors and it shows a mother and child running away from the devastation of the Belfast Blitz. So the artist included the cobblestones of Belfast, the tram line. The mother has a victory roll hairstyle. She's wearing a 1940s tea dress. The children who visit the museum love to discover that the little girl is dragging along her teddy bear as they run away from the devastation. And um, they look at the rubble, the, the unexploded bombs within the rubble and the newspaper, the Northern Whig printed the next day. One detail that it often takes them a while to discover is that something has fallen off the mother's dress and eventually they discover it's a button and it's sitting on one of the cobbles. It's always been one of um, our favourite uh, pieces in the museum but it's even more significant to us now as John Sherlock sadly passed away recently and we were very fond of him um, and have great memories of working with him on this project. This is a portrait by Belfast artist Robert Taylor Carson of Jack McGuinness. Uh, Jack McGuinness was from Belfast, he was a leading seaman in the Royal Navy and he's the only man from Northern Ireland to win the Victoria Cross during the Second World War, which is the highest award for, for courage. And on the 31st of July 1945, he helped to mine a Japanese cruiser. And Carson said that he wanted to portray the determination that Jack McGuinness showed. Uh, in winning his Victoria Cross in 1945, and I think that comes across in this portrait. Behind me is the largest artwork that we have in the museum. It was made by James McKendry. James's brief was to make a piece that um, reflected the home front in Northern Ireland during the Second World War and the close friendships that were formed with the American forces while they were here. If you look closely, you'll see um, one of the American service personnel is an airman and he's wearing an, an earpiece. And they're making their way to the headlands in the, the north coast of Port Moon. And that's obviously symbolic of them making their way um, towards Normandy for the D-Day landings in, in 44. You'll see farmers growing flax. You'll see a mill worker um, working on a loom. You'll see heavy industry, engineering, the shipyards. You'll see cranes. What I love about the phrase the most is that he's included little bits and pieces that make it very Northern Irish. So there's a, an Ulster five bar gate um, and at the end of the frieze you can see the steeple in Antrim. So there's various landmarks and things just to, to tie it to Northern Ireland and our story of the Second World War. One item in our collection that belonged to an American soldier is this dog tag. And it was found at Ballykin near camp in County Down in 1995. And it belonged to an American soldier called William J. Wolfe. Every American soldier would have given a dog tag just like this. So they had two of them. And the purpose of it was to identify their body if they were killed in combat. So one of them would have been left on the body and one of them would have taken off to bring back to the headquarters. In 2019, we were very fortunate to welcome William Wolfe's son, also called William, to the museum to reconnect him with his father's item that was lost all those years ago. It's great to have items like this in the museum collection. This pocket guide to Northern Ireland was issued to all American service personnel who passed through Northern Ireland during the Second World War and it was made to brief the Americans quickly on the customs of the Northern Irish people and what to expect when they got here. It explains that there are two Irelands. It also explained our politics and it advised the Americans that it was best to just stay out of conversations about politics. They were warned that if they were billeted to uh, somewhere in the hills of Antrim, that they may be offered an illicit concoction known as potching, and that they were to watch out for that because it was dynamite. I wonder how many of the Americans took the advice uh, to heart um, and how many copies of these still exist. 